how we parallel park. Got Emily back there. Well, you guys, we got a big surprise. Last night I had such a good time hanging out with those BMXers. And some of them were from Colombia and they were going south as well. And they asked if they could have a ride. So we're about to have four people living in this <laughs> van. Four people, Ooh. one job, Ooh. one cat. <laughs> <laughs> Meet Nat and Ronald, both Colombian BMXers. Hola, For our first night together, we're heading into the desert. We're hoping to find a huge dune to dune board down. So Nat and Ronald were heading to Chile for a competition, but had to slow down because of an injury. We met them in Piora, Peru, where they had joined the welcoming BMX community. <laughs> So on the first night of van life for our friends, the police have already came. What's holding us back is this headlight here. If I just change that, we can keep on to a good spot at the beach. But we know we'll get a fine if we drive a night without that. Not only are we back in business with the headlights, we've decided to laugh in the face of danger and stay here. The beach, epic camp spot, is two and a half hours away. What the heck is that? Oh my gosh, I think Graham might be harassing some birds. Graham, get out of there. friends have had a real introduction to the van life. Police coming, <laughs> getting stuck in the van, and here we had a nice free shower. Let me show you guys. It's, you know, it's nothing glamorous, but I mean, how can you turn down a free shower, nice and cold, a little bit sketch, not clean, but you know what? It sure worked, and I think we all needed that after pushing the van out of the sand. Continue on and hopefully find an epic beach camp spot. Well, here we are reprovisioning the van. Hey, que es eso? Oh, pitaya. <laughs> nice. So this is the way they say you can eat these bananas. You can just squeeze it out the end like this. There it is. Nice. <laughs> Gracias, chicos. Our new Colombian roomies have been making a lot of tasty food for us. We've had the Colombian food in restaurants, but it's cool to try the home cooking. We're heading for a lunch spot with some skate park views. Gracias.
sick traveling around with a BMX. I always want to ride my bike. From Ooh. Colombia. Yeah. We're all done at the skate park and we're hoping to make it to our free campsite for tonight. We found an eye overlander. We definitely do not want to miss another Pacific sunset. Danny is tying the tent to the van so that we <laughs> they don't fly away. <laughs> Here we are up on a cliff. <laughs> it's windy. It's very, very windy. We're at the beach. Our friends are getting their tent together. We're putting their backpacks in there so that it doesn't fly away, but we're still scared. Well, we're gonna sign off. We have some plans to play cards and have some drinks. We're so stoked we found such an awesome place to bring our new friends on our way south. Maxers in the van, Danny is stoked to get to another skate park today. Wow, we're coming up here to this epic, epic camp spot I found down here. We're just past the I overlander descriptions. This road's really pretty nice. There's a steep section, a little bit sandy back there, but it won't be too long. There's a nice beach at the end. The chefs made us some omelets, pasta, rice, and plantains. We're accustomed to making one pot meals, so having a bunch of different things is a pretty cool change. Gracias! <laughs> well, we rarely use this tire compressor, but I'm happy it's finally being used to fill their air mattress. <laughs> Waking up out here is amazing to be able to see where we were and enjoy being in the middle of nowhere on the Peruvian coast, free camping all together. I'm having a hard time understanding some of the things that they say. It's mostly slang, so it's a little bit harder to communicate than I thought it would be. It's all a learning experience. <laughs> we're all gonna go on a walk up this wild bird island thanks to our little beach home. He's gonna put his shoes back on, that's why you gotta wear some hiking sandals. Oh, <laughs> 
So we're having to run to the top of the island because of the horrible bird smell. Because of the dry desert on this coastline, bird poop or guano never decays, making it super stinky. The indigenous communities used the guano as a fertilizer for their crops, and as the Spanish arrived, they also wanted the guano for fertilizer. Into the 1800s, Peru thrived exporting the fertilizer, but as a synthetic fertilizer was made, the demand plummeted. Now the demand is picking back up, but with safer extraction practices. But this time the seabirds are becoming less frequent because of overfishing. This spot has been so nice. The breeze is really good and just fishermen come around so we're pretty alone out here. It's been super fun. We both had to get some work done so we stayed an uh, extra day. That was kind of nice that we didn't have to pack everything up and then put everything away for one day. But it's time to move on. We're gonna head over to Trujillo. We have to refill up on basically everything. <laughs> we ran out of propane. We're almost out of water. We need to do a major shopping trip. With four people, our system doesn't work at half as well. <laughs> we're cooking every meal in here and we're cleaning up every meal. So we really used up our water. We're gonna refill up everything, but it's definitely worth it. It's been super fun being able to hang out for so many days. This spot here has been awesome, really cool to show the friends, you know, what van life is like. But to be honest, I've been a little bit worried about this road out the whole time. I mean, this is not really that steep, right? This part's not bad. But I think here I'm gonna wanna gain some speed to carry it through this portion here, which seems like the sketchiest part. But here, hard pack is pretty good. And I feel like once we get up to this point, We've made it. This looks like a lot rockier. And when we came out here and found this spot, I was stopping and jogging ahead to see if the road was doable. So I think we got this, but uh, you know, sometimes you gotta just let yourself rest easy without worrying about how you're gonna get out of a spot. Unless if there's like a torrential downpour and you're in a low spot, you might want to move right then before it gets worse. <laughs> Graham's pretty much been hiding from the wind the last few days. Here he's finally outside. You don't really like this heat, my boy. But he's coming to say hi because he loves me. Who's my good boy, huh? Come here, my boy. You're the best, huh? Graham doesn't really like wind or no shade, but he definitely loves sand. <laughs> Rolling around in it, digging holes.
locals at the first spot told us about this second skate park and it was quite the search to find looking around some sketchy neighborhoods check out this payoff here it seems like it's an abandoned recreational center so i know we'll be able to get in a few runs at least i don't know if we'll get the boot but it's pretty everything's abandoned A great last sesh here with the homies taking the bus from here but it was super fun having four people in the van traveling for a while and hopefully we'll see them down the road magical little side trip having the friends along with us wow that was such a great time hanging out with the bmxers for the week we definitely learned some new phrases and saw some amazing places along the way good morning we're back in two people van life. Before heading out of Trujillo, we're gonna go to our first of many Peruvian ruins called Chan Chan. There's a museum with beautiful artifacts and after we'll be able to drive the van into the ruins and walk around for a bit. <laughs> Shut off the camera and everything. <laughs> so here we are in the Chan Chan ruins. This is the biggest city in South America made out of mud or adobe style. And this is the main plaza here. So a lot of this has been reconstructed, obviously. They put some shade up here, which ain't so bad. This civilization was called the Moche, and they were here from 1500 BC to 1500 AD. And in this plaza, the central plaza, they would have religious functions. So the priests would be up there on that terrace part. Musicians, people down over here. These fish are going the way of the tides and the currents in the sea. This formation represents the fishing nets they use. They really are based on the water, huh? It's really nice here, really big and ancient, but it just feels a little weird that it's all been reconstructed. You know, a bit Disneyland, a bit touristy. It's something to Well, they did a good job of keeping the ruins clean until you get here when you're done with the walk through the ruins. And they say, oh well, I guess we're done picking up. It's just really sad to me, all this garbage. Morning guys, Buenos dias. check out, really nice view today, <laughs> having a chill morning here. We just dropped off the BMXers, we had such an awesome time with them and it ended up being five days total that they were traveling with us. It hasn't been ideal for surfing, the coast here since it's desert, the bird poop doesn't really decay. So the ocean kind of smells like bird poop, a lot of the places <laughs> smell like bird poop. And you know, there has been a bit of trash at a lot of these spots yeah. too. Right now, this spot's pretty clean, but I wouldn't really want to let Sombrita roam around on her own, you know, which is really sad. I'm not sure if this has gotten a lot worse since the pandemic in Peru or what, but they need some government programs picking up trash now. Yeah, it just, it has kind of made us feel a little bit less positive about our trip which is is like not fun you know we want to be happy all the time and like explore and everything it has made me like not feel as good every day waking up when there's garbage all around us i don't think it's the peruvians fault and i don't blame them for putting garbage on the side of the road whenever they need to but the government needs to figure out how to get dispose of this garbage and put it in a place where it's safe there are dogs ripping up the garbage very unsafe for the health of the people that live in these places for there to be garbage everywhere but when it came to the surfing honestly the first time I went in the water smelled so bad and then I came out and I saw like a 
diaper sitting there. The coastline here has some smells. Yeah. Lake, and some are natural, yeah. you know, and some are garbage related. We're planning to head up into the mountains next time. We're gonna show you guys a really epic area of Peru called the, the White uh, Mountains, the Cordillera Blanca. Super tall glaciery mountains. Yay! We'll catch you next time. Bye!